just a quick reminder guys, these narrations are best enjoyed with headphones on. Team Rewind this week I review the third entry of the Creative Assembly's collaboration with the UK's premier tabletop game makers. Could this game challenge SNK's King of Fighters 15's 103.75% or is this a case of goodbye Isika? Let's find out. UK-based tabletop games designer Games Workshop started at nothing more than the company's CEO John Peake, Ian Livingston and Steve Jackson selling wooden boards for various tabletop games including Backgammon in the year 1975. Today the business is raking in a mass of £353.2 million pounds in revenue in 2021 while partnering with other independent retailers to keep British business alive in a post-COVID-19 environment. The business's best-selling tabletop gaming franchise they have in their portfolio is Warhammer, which is based around fantasy battles in a tabletop environment, similar to chess. The franchise started in 1983. In 2016, Sega acquired the rights to make video games based on this highly successful tabletop gaming franchise, and in May, the Creative Assembly released the first entry based on the collaboration of the highly successful Total War series and Games Workshop highly successful tabletop gaming franchise Warhammer was released exclusively for the PC on Valve's Corporation Steam platform. In 2017, the second entry of this franchise got released again exclusively for the PC on the 20th September. This particular entry of the series was probably one of the best entries of hell the entire franchise in my honest opinion. Firstly, it's had the Mortal Empires campaign. If you only were to a game in the series, along with the second entry of the series, you have access to the largest Total War campaigns in the franchise. The campaign map itself combined the worlds of both entries of the franchise and a single campaign map. This would mean that you will have a whole lot of settlements to conquer. Earlier this month, the third and final entry of this collaboration got released. This particular entry of the series got released in the exact same timeline as the previous two entries. This time is set, is set in the third continent of this war ridden fantasy world, the Realm of Chaos. You take control of one of the various factions who are battling a tide to become the Lord of Chaos. The accessibility scores are as follows. To successfully spring the ambush against Kyo Kuzanagi, audibility to give it in. This game is quite dialogue heavy, however the dialogue in this game is subtitles, for example, if an advisor is giving information about a particular race, as they have been encountered or other pieces of advice given during the course of a campaign, subtitles will appear in a text box located in the top left of the screen. This text box will appear until you decide to close it. The only downside is that the standard battle chatter that the units would say during a battle, for example, DIE TRAITOR! Or, the gods have abandoned us, retreat! It's not subtitles, but it is not important as if significant events happen during a battle, for example, a unit has to flee or a general was to be wounded or killed in battle, notifications will appear on screen and an icon will appear on top of the exact location on the battlefield where the event took place. So a player with hearing impairments will find very little to no issues when playing this game. To break through Iori Yagami's left flank, Mobility gave it 10.5. As part of the course, the game is primarily controlled by the mouse. Left click select settlements, units or armies, and right click issues command to them. For the more competitive player, there are hotkeys. These shortcuts can be redefined to whichever key or mouse button you want via the game's options menu. So a player with a mobility impairment can issue commands to his or her troops during the heat of battle as the game progresses. However, support for additional input methods, for example controllers, 
could make this game more accessible. I understand that controllers and strategy games are like petrol and water, they just don't mix. But for a player with a mobility impairment, using a controller can, can make the game a lot more comfortable to play. If the Halo Wars series are built for controllers for the ground up, city builders for example Tropico, Starbase Startopia and Surviving Mars all having controller support and hell, even Pirate Studios hit RTS for Torians jumping on the full control support bandwagon, why not this game? So a player with mobility impairments will be able to play this game very easily. To force K-Dash's unit to route, gameplay we gave a 10. This game sends the trilogy out with a bang. The developers said that they will expand the Mortal Empires campaign, incorporating this game's maps, races and factions will be coming in the next few months. This game runs a lot smoother than other titles from the series, for example Rogue 2. The quest battles are challenging and fun. The gameplay is a lot more streamlined as successional units can be recruited by generals while on the campaign map rather than using settlements to recruit troops in the classic entries of the franchise. Although the amount of fractions that are currently available within the game is somewhat limited, more and more will be added over time. Well yeah, guys, they normally do this. The game is also very well optimized. This game runs like a dream on my mid-range GTX 1060. In my honest opinion, the Warhammer Trilogy is probably the best game to the franchise. If you are entered into the Total War games, hell, strategy games in general, this game is free on Game Pass on PC. Don't knock it till you try it. And the overall score is a massive 103.75%. And this engagement between strategy and fighting games, i.e. Total War, Warhammer 3 and King of Fighters 15 has ended in a stalemate. See you guys in the next review, Spartan Commander 1998. As this video gets uploaded to YouTube, the poll for next week's review will be officially open. So you lucky lots have three options this week. First off we got Elden Ring, the RPG printing itself on difficulty from Dark Souls creator from software. And it's up against two classics in their own right. So first off we got one of those recognisable famous survival horror shooters of the 90s, Doom. Or take a trip to Middle Earth for some classic RPG action with Lord of the Rings the Third Age. Again, this polls will close on Wednesday at midnight. So get voting guys. This is Spartan Commander 1998, Roll Out Spartan Legion.